Good evening. It's so great to be here with you guys again this lovely Monday. I'm not sure how many of you have been just going, 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 going throughout the day, but as always, I just would like to begin with taking a couple of deep breaths together. And just to let out all the tension of the day with your exhale. And let's just do one more of those. Maybe shake out with the exhale. Know that there's nothing that happens during this day that you need to carry with you in this moment. Thank you for joining me today. Hi, Bean. I see that you've joined. Uh, today we're gonna talk about vulnerability hangovers. And before I begin talking about the vulnerability hangovers, I just wanted to make sure that we are clear on exactly what vulnerability is. So I looked it up in the dictionary. And according to, hi Bean, according to the definition in the dictionary, vulnerability is being susceptible to physical or emotional attack or harm. So that seems like a pretty serious thing that we have a tendency to undertake, and for good reason. Being vulnerable allows us to be the best version of who we are. Just go ahead and read or listen to any of Brene Brown's books or her talks. She's got an amazing TED Talk out there. I highly recommend it. But my life changed uh, around this idea of vulnerability when I read Daring Greatly by Brene Brown. And I realized that I was living my life really, really small and not allowing other people to witness me and see me for the fullness of who I am. I was too afraid. I was afraid of being susceptible to physical or emotional attack or harm, the very definition of vulnerability. And so I stayed really small. I stayed really tight. I didn't let anybody witness me, including my husband. I, that really created some major trauma in our relationship because not allowing him to see me for who I am made me feel like a fraud and it made him feel like he didn't know who I was. And there was such major tension that happened because of that, which is fine, but it just made being vulnerable with him that much more difficult when it came time for me to realize that if I wanted to save our marriage, I was going to have to step out into that vulnerability and allow him to see the full expression of who I am. So when I first did it, I did it very tentative, very, very tentative. But now both my husband and I have gotten to a place where we feel much more comfortable being vulnerable with each other. We've created this really great sacred space for each other where we can hear each other, listen to each other, and appreciate the other person's vulnerability. That being said, what we have found over the years is that this common thread just keeps happening, which is, during those times when we are our most vulnerable, shortly afterwards, I don't know if you can hear that, but there's some amazing thunder happening right outside right now. So, um, but back to what I was saying. So what we found was that each time we were being vulnerable with each other, we would find that we would have these physical symptoms afterwards. They would be, we would feel exhausted. We would feel like we had headaches. We would feel just like really depressed and really low and I mean it would just, it felt really bad. It felt like a hangover. And there was a point when I started to say that, like, God, I feel like I've had a hangover. And we recognized over and over again that that hangover feeling kept popping up right around the time that we were being vulnerable. And so we've gotten to the point where, you know, when one or the other of us is being vulnerable and the next day we're like, God, I don't feel so good today. We can look at each other and go, dude, you got a vulnerability hangover. You know, you just gotta take care of yourself today. 
So vulnerability hangovers are a thing. Think about back on your own life. It may not be in your relationship, but maybe it's with somebody at work, or maybe it's in an area of your life where you are making new friends, and um, you found you feel like you've overshared, and maybe the next day you're feeling really unwell. So think back about on those times in your lives where you may have had those vulnerability hangovers. So what do we do about them? Well, a vulnerability hangover, what that is is that we're stretching the limits of what we are comfortable with. So we treat it just like anything else that we stretch the limits of. When you go and exercise, the whole one of the points of exercise is to really stretch what you have the capability of doing so that you can kind of just create new. And when you've done that, and when you've pushed past your limits, what do you do? You rest your muscles. You just take it easy, and you let them recover, and you let them recoup. And it's the same thing with a vulnerability hangover. Exact same steps. You begin, you be, <laughs> one of the differences is that this has a very emotional side to it. So I would say that the very first step you should take when it comes to a, a vulnerability hangover is having compassion for yourself, but not only for yourself, but the other person that was a witness to your vulnerability. Because the thing is, when you're vulnerable, then you may touch on somebody else's story something that may trigger something in them that they then feel bad about themselves for. And it's just because you bringing light to your own shadows sometimes creates this opportunity or this challenge for somebody else to then witness their own shadow. So when having compassion, not only have compassion for yourself, but have compassion for the person who is witnessing you because they may not have received it the way that you needed them to, or they may not have reacted the way that kept you feeling safe. So having that compassion for the both of you. The next step is going to be to rest. Your body is telling you to rest. It's mentally, emotionally exhausted. Let it just rest. Take a nap if you need to, but whatever it is that you're doing, you can go about your day, but do everything just a little bit more slowly, a little bit more gentle, and don't overexert yourself. And then the other thing that I would recommend doing is celebrate. Cel uh, celebrate this opportunity that you took, the courage that it took for you to stand up and be vulnerable. For you to stand up and be vulnerable so in such a way that it caused you to have a vulnerability hangover. You've just proven with that hangover that you pushed the limits of what you've been able to do in the past. What a thing to celebrate. So some of the things that I love having my clients do is I have them, you know those bells that you see at the hotel front desk and you ring the bell to have somebody come? I have one in my bedroom and I recommend all of my clients to get one of those. It's a great way to celebrate when you've pushed the extent of the boundaries that you feel like you have with your vulnerability. So you find yourself with a hangover the next day, go ring that bell celebrate. I think that's amazing. And you should be so proud because it takes so much courage to have that kind of vulnerability. And if the bell thing isn't your thing, get stickers, little gold star stickers that you can just place on your jacket or maybe even under your jacket on your shirt where it's only just for you, but you know that you went out there and you were very courageous. So go ahead and celebrate that. Those are my recommendations for handling this vulnerability hangover that we all get, hopefully, that we all get because we're all pushing the limits of becoming the full expression of the people that we were meant to be. And with that, 
If anybody has any questions about that, if anybody has any other questions about what a vulnerability hangover might mean or other ways to address these vulnerability hangovers, please mention it in the comments below. If you have a story to share about a time when you really pushed the limits of your vulnerability and ended up with a hangover, I'd love to hear more about that as well. The more we can witness these moments the more we can release them from our energy field. And the more we release them from our energy field, the more open we are to growing as humans. Now, if you were on my call last week, you may have heard that I am doing these great pop-up sessions right now, so much fun. They are moments when I am posting out on to social media that I'm having a pop-up session. And these sessions are meant for anybody who wants a discounted intuitive coaching session. My sessions are normally $99. During the pop-up sessions, they're for $45. But you do have to be with one, the first person within those first 15 minutes after seeing the social media pop-up session uh, post that I put out there. So it's really fun to do, and if you want to be in the know of what day and the two-hour window in which I'm going to be having those pop-up sessions to give you a little bit of an edge, go ahead and sign up for my email list. You can do so right to the left of the screen. If you follow along um, the uh, different tabs to the bottom, there's a little spot that says lead pages. Pop in into there, type in your email address. You'll get a free meditation from me and also those uh, emails. You'll be on my email list, which means that you'll get that in the know about those pop-up sessions and you'll also get my newsletter. I think that is it for this evening. Again, I am so grateful for you all for joining me. It is always such a pleasure, and I will be back here next Monday. If you have any items that you would like me talking about during these live sessions, please reach out to me. You can message me or just post something on my page, and I will be happy to address anything that you have any questions about. It's been great, and I hope you all have a wonderful Monday evening. And before I go, I am, I just got a little note. I want to make sure I get it out there. Very interesting, Lee. That's my middle name, and she's one of the very few people allowed to call me that. <laughs> I think I would prefer to celebrate with a glass of wine or champagne than the bell or sticker. I love it being, that is definitely a way to celebrate. So thank you so much for sharing that. All right, I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Go out there, be vulnerable, because the world needs more of that. Good night.